look at this over here. It's it's now amber, which means I'm not going to make it by 41 miles. So something's off. Well, I think then you plugged something wrong in your navigation. Is what I, did. I didn't. Look, it. I've got it going. I'm going soprano. Whenever you're wrong, you tend to raise your voice. I do not. <laughs> I think it's safer to have your hazard lights on if you if you're going to be one of those one of those guys, right? One of those EVs that is sort of uh, doing the walk of shame, which is what I'm doing right now. Oh, we've got the turtle. Oh, there he is. Driving power reduced. Let's floor it and see what happens. You ready, Kath? Here we go. That's floored. That is floored That's right there. It didn't do anything. Well, Look at that. 51, 52. It's day two of our trip. So yesterday, the summary is that we covered 1,010 miles. And today, we've actually got 355 miles to, to go. Um, South Carolina really was not was not good. Uh, Electrify America, although we got juice, was not good. But what I can tell you is the car was amazing. And I am so pumped about this. Lucid, what a great grand touring vehicle it is. So let's get into it. Day two of our trip from Connecticut to Marco Island, Florida. So Bailey's been riding in the back seat here the whole time. And she's been doing great. Bailey, good morning. How are you today? Are you a good girl? Hey, who bear? Bailey. There she is. You ready for day two? Yes, she is. Kathy, you ready for day two? Yes. All right. Awesome. All right, here we go. The cockpit. The place. All right, so highly recommend the Hampton Inn and Suites here in McClenny, Florida, which is just west out on I-10 of Jacksonville. Now, we have, just for statistics, yesterday... We actually drove 1,010.2 miles, 331 watt hours, kilowatt hours burned, and we're at a 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. What I can tell you is South Carolina helped our stats because, man, was that brutal. Um, just, just really horrible. As far as the trip that we're going to be doing today, we are going to be heading off to... Uh, the Walk at Highwoods Preserves. This is a great station. There is a Panera Bread there. There's a Dunkin' Donuts there. And there are eight 350s there. And I've had good luck with that, with that charging place. And it's really clean and it's a great spot. So one of the things that I did mention yesterday was that I was, I was wondering why they can't show what kind of percentage that you would arrive at at your destination but it turns out that over here if you're using the navigation of the car you can see that there it shows you 14 percent and if you if you go to manage it you can see it there as well so uh, it's 116 miles away uh, it says we'll get there at 9 42 a.m it's about an hour and 43 minutes and we will arrive with a 14 percent state of charge our current state of charge right now is let me take a quick peek at that. Our current state of charge is, if I go to displays, units, percentage, we're at a 37% state of charge, which translates into 169 miles of range. Destination is 116 miles away. And if you look at this, at this we're over here um, just west of Tampa, you can see we're uh, Tampa. This is uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. And this road from here, McClenny, all the way down to I-75 is kind of back road, slow roads. So we'll get real good efficiency. This is McClenny. Actually, no. This is the walk at Highwoods Preserve. And then from there, this is basically the Tampa Bay area where Katie lives. And then our destination will be down here Marco Island. So there it is right there. So let's get our trip going. 
Bailey and Kathy are ready. We've got our GoPros all situated with new batteries. And it's time to take off. We don't need a destination. Let's go where the river's taking us. Mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. Mm -hmm. Over the rainbow. If we hold tight, we can chase the Mississippi through the night. Hundreds of miles away The water is warm Let's dip our toes right in and be reborn I don't know why we'd wait Grab some glasses in the atlas We can prove we're smarter than a phone mm -hmm. Let's go where there's no reception See if we can make it on our own Look at this. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Say Oh. No, oh, the sun will come out today. The sun will come out today. Bet your bottom dollar that today. There'll be sun. So, so the lane keep assist function is very good in this car. So even though you don't have the ability to, even though you don't have the ability to do lane centering, if when you use the adaptive cruise in this car, and so I'll just I'll let go of the wheel here and you know, watch. Look how beautiful that is. So. I'm just going down the road. Now, I don't have hands on the wheel, but I'm covering. I'm just doing this as a, this is an exper experiment for science, you see? Yes. Okay, now, it's starting to drift a little to the right. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. And it went back. Did you see that? Yes. Okay. And now it's, it's straightened itself out. Now, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah? Yeah? Look at that. It's really, so the lane keep assist, is quite good in this car. I remember years ago, I had a Prius, Gen 3 Prius level, and it was the Gen 3 Prius 5, which had adaptive cruise. A lot of the technology that they had embedded into the Lexus tech, you know, like Lexus always got the best safety features first. My Prius 5 had adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. It did not have lane centering, but that thing used to ping pong. It was kind of like the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Tacoma, Washington. It started to vibrate and would start going back and forth a little bit. And then it would get worse and worse and worse. And then it would just like blow out. This car has a subtlety to it in the lane keep assist. Oh, nice jail. Oh, Boy. that's not how I want to start my day. You see the fencing over there? Yeah, they want to keep you in. All right, so I just want to say that if we see someone hitchhiking, Probably not going to pick them up or her up. Right. Is that good advice? Especially if they're wearing orange. Yeah, if they're wearing orange. Orange, no good. No, no good. Well, yeah, that is a massive jail. Wow, somewhere in the middle of Florida. I don't even know where we are. Probably surrounded by alligators too. Well, <laughs> everything. Everything is surrounded. Look at those two cute palm trees. Wow. So yeah. So anyway, I, I, I'm I'm pretty impressed now. On a turn like this. Lane keep is not going to help you. You better steer. But if you're on the straight, I would say that it's good. Eventually, lane centering will become available on this car. Just not yet. So in the meantime, lane keep, it's kind of a little nice, nice little crutch for you.
Okay, so our next stop is going to be the walk at Highwoods Preserve. We love that place. Okay. They've got eight 350s. Actually, one of them, I think, is a Chatamo 150 CCS and seven 350s. And I've had very good luck with that uh, with that place over the years. I don't know why. I don't know, but look at this guy coming up here. Wow. I mean, I'm doing. What do they think? He's going to lose it? I don't know. All right, so listen to this. This is weird. It's telling me that I am 116 miles away from the walk at Highwoods Preserve. I think that's what that means. That little squiggly line right there. But I've got 69 miles of range. So one would say, well, I'm not gonna make it there. But then when I go over to, when I go over to um, CarPlay, and one of the things people do fly on this road, I forgot about this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over because the, uh, the Hyundai Elantra, actually that's a tra, he's, he's missing the, the E and the L. <laughs> um, but it says the walk at Highwoods Preserve, according to this, is 97 miles away. Now, if we say go, if we say go now, okay, let's see how many miles that is. 45. 103, right? Well, what is this? This says 45. No, that's 40, that's until our next move. Yeah, but it's right off the highway. It, okay, this is how far it is according to Waze. We're 103 miles away from the walk at Highwoods Preserve. And so this is telling me 67 miles. But what's so strange is when you go back over to the nav here. You know, I could hold that camera. Okay, here. Yeah, why don't you hold that? The reason I came along. Oh, that's the reason? That's the reason. Okay. All right, so we're, we'll go here and we'll say the walk at Highwoods Preserve. We'll go now. After four miles, keep right to take the exit and then turn left. And now it's telling me I'm going to arrive there with a 54% state of charge. But I don't understand that. Now I've got 41 miles. Let me show. Let me just look at this over here. It's it's now amber, which means I'm not going to make it by 41 miles. So something's off. Well, I think then you plugged something wrong in your navigation. Is what I, did. I didn't look it. I've got it going. Stop going soprano. Whenever you're wrong, you tend to raise your voice. I, I do not. <laughs> Listen, this thing says the walk at Highwoods Preserve right there. We're going to arrive at 948. I believe Waze, because Waze I know works. I also believe that I only have 64 miles of range. Okay, so we've got 37 miles of range, and according to our stat here, this is the first time I'm seeing this actually be correct. <clears throat> Apparently, we are 38.7 miles away from Bushnell, and it's telling us that we're going to arrive with a 0% state of charge, and it's telling us we have insufficient range. So I say we don't have insufficient range. What we have is the ability to control our speed with, um, we have our ability to control our speed and slow down a little bit. And then one other thing that we can do to increase our range is we can turn off battery preconditioning, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think we're going to, we're going to delicately and sort of like with forensic knife-like precision we are going to pull into Bushnell at exactly zero percent out of spec style and just uh, hope that there may be an ice machine nearby what do you think Kath okay is that all right with you 
was on list tonight. Oh, well, there you go. Well, look, everything's fine. How's that? Good. All right, no worries. All right, so the strategy here is we've got 32 miles of range, indicated range. It still says insufficient range. I have turned off battery preconditioning here, and it's telling me that I am 33.9 miles away from the charging station in Bushnell. Now, what I don't know, I have taken this car down to 0% once before, and under 3% state of charge, you definitely limit the battery, or the, um, it's, you get into like a little bit of a turtle mode. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm drafting behind this, this truck. Uh, I'm going a little faster than I want to at 70, 68 miles an hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that these two numbers, the 31 and the 33.1 start to converge over the next, let's say 15 miles or so. And, uh, oh, my draft, he's moving over. What are you doing? Oh, I got another one right in front of him. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I pull in right at 0%. I'm not worried about this. You can always manage these things with speed. The thing is, I just don't know this car that well. So for example, with the Hyundai, one of the things I learned with the Ionic 5 and the GV60 is you've got, when it says you're at 0%, you've got a lot more buffer in that battery um, I, I, for those of you that watched my ice machine video where I panicked and I, I made a wrong turn and I thought I wouldn't be able to make it to the, at the time that was uh, Florence, South Carolina, Electrify America, I ended up going to a convenience store where they had an ice machine and I plugged my 110 uh, charger and I plugged AC for a few hours and then I got enough juice. But one of the things I learned was that if you plug a, um, it's a, a V-Peak adapter into your OBT2, you want to film there? All right. Uh, if you plug your V-Peak adapter into a, oh, you're going to film me. All I right. hope that truck is But getting... my side view is not good. Oh uh, my gosh. Film the truck. That's much better, better, okay. better view. Here, I'll get this too. But what I was going to say is that the, 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 the EGMP platform cars, I know you can go at least another eight, nine miles on, on a charge with that. I don't know this car well enough, so therefore I'm gonna draft behind this truck. I'm gonna conserve my energy. Like I mentioned, I turned the preconditioning off and we're gonna glide in to Bushnell at 0% state of charge. And we sure as heck better hope that we can get some juice there. Now the strategy is, I don't want to get too much juice there because there are only 150s and there's only four. So we're just going to charge up just enough to be able to get down to the end, uh, the walk at Highwoods Preserve. Because that's where we're going to have breakfast at the Panera and that's where there are seven 350s. So game on here. Okay, so the car still says we have insufficient range. However, I've backed my speed off to 57 miles an hour. I've turned off the AC. We do, we've turned off preconditioning and we are only 22.1 miles away from Bushnell. So we're gonna be fine. We just kind of let the, the car ease itself into the right answer. Okay, good. So now we've we've slowed it down even to 55. You'll notice that it's it no longer says insufficient range. Now it says good news, you'll arrive at 0% state of charge. So we have got 20 miles of range according to the car and we are 20 miles away from Electrify America at Bushnell. So I'm going to stay I want to get this buffer to around 2 or 3 miles. And then when I get super close, then I can accelerate. But I just want to be conservative here while I have sort of the uh, ability to do so. So again, don't panic if you get into these situations. I did not anticipate doing this today. I really didn't. But um, you can always control your speed and 
and coast in. Now, I didn't even look for additional, whether they're, um, you know, EV goes or charge points around, just because I know I can coast into this, into this Electrify America at, um, at Bushnell. And, and it is, it is putting out juice. We may have to wait a little bit. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. But um, yeah, so we're in good shape here. We will arrive at 19 at 0%. And yeah, we'll just keep we'll keep playing this game here. Okay, just a quick quick updates. For those of you who know 75 in Florida, if you go 55, it's dangerous. So I've got my hazard lights on. And uh, you know, the speed limit here is 70, but people usually go 85, 90. And it's just one of those things that I think it's safer to have your hazard lights on if you if you're gonna be one of those one of those guys, right? One of those EVs that is sort of uh, doing the walk of shame, which is what I'm doing right now. But uh, the good news is that we have 14 miles uh, in the tank, as you can see. Well, actually it says 13 miles in the tank there. And we're only 12 miles away from the station. So once I get that buffer up to three miles here, then what I'll do is I'll start to accelerate my speed up to around 60, and perhaps I won't need to use my, my hazards then. So it's, we're still scheduled to arrive at a state of charge of 0%. I have full confidence that we will get there fine with a little bit of buffer, and but I'm just taking it easy. The sooner you make these types of decisions to slow down, the better off you are. So again, just to reiterate, we have we have turned off the battery preconditioning here, and the car is telling me to look for charging station. And then over here, this is the only indicator that we really need to uh, need to charge. It's the car is not yelling at me or doing anything, and I really don't know how much buffer there is in this Lucid. That's something we probably should test. Like I've tested, well, I had the data in the in the Hyundai, but here I, I'm flying blind, so I want to be super careful because uh, we're just starting our vacation. We don't want to start the vacation by running out of juice. That would not be good. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are, we've got the three miles of buffer right now. And what's interesting is there's two options. I could stay on 75 at highway speeds, or I could get off and take a local road down to Bushnell Electrify America. And, and what's interesting is the, the navigation is, is asking me to actually get off. It and, was more like telling you. Well, it was recommending. <laughs> Strongly. It was, it was, but we're fine. I mean, I think we can, we can hammer home here. We gotta, I don't want to pull in with 1% state of charge. That's embarrassing, uh, out of spec style. Right. Don't you think? Yes. It is, right? Bushnell. There we go. Now turn right. Now turn right. Okay. Here we go. We'll turn right here. Here we go. Follow the road for six miles. Oh yeah, thirty-five miles an hour, six miles of range. We've got this. I mean, six miles till. Yeah, we've got this. This is no problem. All right. So I actually was in swift mode. I just realized I backed it off to smooth mode right now. Not that I think that that would that wouldn't have any impact because I was very light on the throttle so we are we've got five miles of range and we are only 1.4 miles away from electrify America so look this technique is uh, it works it's it's um, it's interesting I didn't really did not want to use it today I was trying to pull in you know I think the only other time I pulled in at a low state of charge this trip, was three percent now we've got the turtle oh there he is driving power reduced vehicle can be driven but performance may be limited all right so let's do a let's do let's do a, a let's floor it and see what happens you ready kath here we go that's floored that is floored that's right it. there it didn't do anything well, look at that 51 52. Well, it's not putting the it's it's software limiting how much energy you'll go to the battery. 
I've got three miles of range. I'm only 0.8 miles away. All right, so at what state of charge does it do that in? It does that at a state of charge percentage, oh, 1%. So the turtle makes his appearance at 1%, the mile, which, is, left and then keep left. which is pretty interesting. All right, so let's pull into Electrify America and plug in. Bushnell, Florida, hello. I'm glad you're here. So we've arrived at Bushnell, Electrify America, and there is nobody here, which is good. There are two 150s. One of them is a chatham combo. We've got a 350, and would you looky here? We've got the dreaded, the maximum. I mean, this one's nerfed as well. Every single 350 that I have seen in the last week or two weeks out there actively trying to charge, Electrify America says they're all under repair. Now, this one here, I don't think it says that it's nerfed. So maybe we're going to get lucky here and I could plug in. But I, I don't know what's going on with, with Electrify America and their 350s. Okay, we're plugged in, connecting to the vehicle. Again, I have not had a failed plug and charge attempt yet. Processing payment, payment authorized. This handshake is quick, initiating charging. Let's see what we got here. I've got the uh, battery and we're at 1% state of charge. So amateur of me. I should have pulled it in at zero. I was at no, zero. because you're with me. No, no, I was at zero. <laughs> it says preparing the charge. Let's see what this thing does. And uh, hopefully it pulls, uh, hopefully we'll have a, a great session here. It didn't say it was nerfed. I don't know. We'll have to see. Wow, whopping 32 kilowatts. Oh, now there it goes. All right, come on, baby. Okay, we can put it over here so oh, you, okay, can, I can see. you can watch the highlights here. Thank you. Oh, look at this. It's bouncing around. Yeah, but it's trying. It's doing the dirty charge thing. Look at that. This behavior, we're starting to see it again. Yeah. This is, once again, these are the Signet units. I think you'd do better on a 150. Well, I just want to see if Let's this... Down to the 50s. No, I know. This is not going to be a good charging session for sure. Um, but I, I want to document this dirty charging session as Kyle has dubbed it. I call it the roller coaster. I, I mean, it's just crazy. All right, I'm throwing in the towel here. Um, we've got 60 miles of range. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta hit stop charging first. There, actually, it did stop charging. What did I take? 18.95 kilowatt hours. Ended state of charge 16%, 12 minutes, and um, we've got about 60 miles of range, and we're about 44 miles away from the Highwoods Preserve. I'd really like to pull in there with 0%, so I'm going to rip it down to there because I'd love to do a 0 to 100% if we can get a good um, a good charger over there. Now, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the chargers at the walk at Highwoods Preserve are not these Signet stations. If you see these Signet stations, that's the company that manufactures these high-power charging stations. Fix the internals. See behind these counter, behind these, uh, all over here. These are the, these are actually the, the. I don't know if those are the devices that the the actual chargers. These are just the dispensers. So maybe they could replace those in there and continue to use these dispensers. But man, by slapping a, a sticker, whether it's ultra fast or hyper fast, and nowhere on this station does it say it's limited. The one over there says it's limited. This one does not. So Charger 4, not good. Day two of the trip from Connecticut to Florida, and here I am at Bushnell, Florida, 
where there's no one else here except me. Um, we've got two 350s and two 150s. One of the 150s is actually a Chatamo, the one over here. Um, but one of the 350s says that it is software limited because of improvements to maintain. This one here that I just charged at, this 350 does not say that there's any issue with it, but there is. I plugged in and it was doing the yo-yo effect again. Okay, so we are heading to the walk at Highwoods Preserve. I love this station, it's great. There's uh, eight or seven 350s and one 150 with the Chatamo and a Duncan and a Panera. But more importantly, I think it's got some good chargers there. So we are 36 miles away with 48 miles of range. We're currently at a 13% state of charge. I overcharged just a little bit, but here's what we're gonna do. We're preconditioning the battery now and as part of this whole road trip down to Florida. So we're 33 miles away from, uh, from the walk at Highwoods Preserve and we're about 180 miles away from Marco Island, Florida. So it's 9.22 a.m. day two. I'm looking forward to some breakfast because we hit the road this morning at 6.30 and it's already 9.30, 9.22, and I haven't even had coffee yet. Well, I'm pretty sure I fed you a croissant. Oh yeah, I had a croissant. <laughs> How quickly we forget. Yeah, can, can I have another one? Yes. Thank you. And pull in right here. Okay. We are. Oh wait, I can't, I'm on the wrong side. Hold on, I gotta back up. Amateur. <laughs> this is the walk at Highwoods Preserve, just outside of Tampa, Florida. And we just got an awesome charge. These are the new SK Signets. There are seven 350s and one 150. And we plugged in and we got 284 kilowatts immediately. And then it tapered down from there. Uh, I will tell you that this car charges, this Lucid charges very slowly from 80 to 100%. I managed to plug in. It was just at that 1%, 0%. I plugged in and I did a whole 0 to 100 test. That will be my second 0 to 100 test on this car. I'll be putting that video up separately on the Out of Spec Dave channel. But listen, thank you EA for putting these this station in here. It's an amazing station. You got Don Duncan, you got Panera Bread, you got Baskin Robbins, and most importantly, you have very good high-speed charging right here. This is the way to do charging quick analysis about this car perhaps compared to the model s so this car as advertised has a 516 mile range but that's with the 19 inch wheels and since i'm running on this lucid this is a 2022 grand touring which has the 112 kilowatt hour battery pack i've got the 21 inch wheels and what we've experienced and we are so far 1,210 miles into the trip. We've only got about 150 miles more to go to get down to Marco. So we are right at the 3.0 miles per kilowatt hour. So if you think about that, three, and that's with a mixed driving of um, speeds, high speeds, allegedly, and a lot of traffic as well. South Carolina was horrendous, right? But I, I truly believe, well, so if you take 3.0 times 112 kilowatt hours, that's going to give you an approximate range of 336 miles that you'll be able to drive this car. So when you go on a road trip, the one benefit you'll get from a large battery pack is that first leg of the trip. Then after that first leg of the trip, the most important thing is charging speed, not necessarily the size of the pack, although that does contribute it as well. So in our case, we left Darien, Connecticut with a full battery pack showing 467 miles of range. And we pulled into Stafford, Virginia with a 3% state of charge. And I think we've never gone that far. No, we've never, we've never gone that far. And that was 318.9 miles that we went on, uh, on that first charge. That was great. We were feeling good. We were feeling good. We left at 3 in the morning, 3.05 to be exact. Not that I'm counting. Um, 
and no traffic getting out of New York. As a matter of fact, we made it to Newark Airport in 50 minutes. That's never happened. Which has never happened before. Unless you leave at three in the morning. Or go by helicopter. Exactly. Right. So, so yeah. So we got we got down to Stafford, Virginia, and um, and and that was that was not a good session. We had the situation. Fact, I wrote my notes. Terrible session. Terrible session. I took notes. Uh, yeah. And what we saw, this was one of the older Signet units from 2020. We started to see this, this pattern of the, the, the chargers going up and down 110 kilowatts and then 60 and, and it was really kind of crazy. And so we left upset without a good charging session. We went from three to, I believe, 28%, right? Three to 28%. And then we pulled into Richmond, Virginia with 13 percent state of charge and we experienced the same thing now in this case what happened was both 350s just like at stafford were limited so electrify america has this theme right now that i've seen is that at these older signet stations which are up and down the east coast they are the 350s are just not working and you've got people that are plugging into these 350s thinking, oh, it's a 350, I must be getting fast charging. But they're not looking at the kilowatts that they're getting. And these stations are, are only putting out maximum of 50 kilowatts on average. I've seen a little bit more here and there, but they're not worth pulling into because on a high voltage car, you could plug into a, a 150 and you can get upwards of 170, I've seen as much as 174 on this trip on a what was it oh an, on an abb station which i'll talk about in a minute but um yeah so we 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 would have not pulled the plug on stafford had that been a good uh good charging station but we did we went down to richmond we pulled out 56 minutes later yeah. with a what state of charge 80 85 percent state of charge and we added 90 kilowatt hours to the battery pack um, according to that was according to Electrify America, which is very interesting to me because um, the amount of heat loss, and I'll explain this in a little bit, the amount of heat loss that the dispenser shows versus how much energy the car got on on these uh, high voltage batteries uh, or large batteries, it seems to be quite a large disparity. Anyway, we so that was two charging sessions yesterday. Then we pulled into Lumberton, Lumberton. South uh, Carolina. It's actually North Carolina. Oh, it, is. it is. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, let me correct my notes. Yeah, it, Lumberton is in North Carolina. I suggest you and fire me. I'm not gonna. I can't fired. fire you. We're hooked at the hip. <laughs> so, so what state of charge did we pull into Lumberton with? Thirteen. Uh, uh, pulled in with thirteen percent, right? See, that's your handwriting. Yeah, I know. I can't read it. Okay. Okay. And here's mine. I, left with 85%. Okay, so we pulled in with 13%, left with 85%. 85%. Now, what's interesting is is this the one where we actually pulled in to the level two? Well, I don't know. We were on a 150, but remember we were excited because we for a while had a max of 164. Yeah, okay. So here's what we did. When we got to Lumberton there were the the 350s were occupied one by a maki -E, which was at 97 percent this is the one where the guy pulled in with the um with the lucid or no uh no that was our last one that was pooler pooler georgia That's okay so i gotta i'm gonna edit this part out but what what in lumberton north carolina we pulled in at 13 at 13 percent pulled 122 max at 21 percent and then we unplugged at, but we saw Staff for 36 minutes. I don't know. pulled max of 164. This is where we saw the charging going up and down and all that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So at Lumberton, what we did was we pulled in a 13% state of charge. We saw it, it jump all the way up to 164. This was not on a 350 because the 350s were also hosed, nerfed. So on a 150, we saw quickly 164, and then it pulled back to 122, 120. 
after 36 minutes, we pulled a total of 67 kilowatt hours and we left with a state of charge of 85%. So that 67 kilowatt hours that we pulled, I think was read from the car. So that was it. Okay. Then we drove down to Pooler, Georgia. That this was, was last this stop. was our last stop yesterday, our fourth stop yesterday. And this was the one where there was an Ionic 5 and uh, an Amak E on the 350s. And, and uh, those were not, they were not nerfed, but the Mach E was, the Mach E was pulling, uh, he was at 97%, it was a family from Quebec. And then there was a family from Buffalo in the Ionic 5 that was at, they unplugged around 85%, which is fine, uh, which is great. But I plugged into a into a into a, a 150 and immediately got 174, and that charging curve was doing pretty well. And that was not a Signet unit. This was an ABB unit. And anyway, when the Ionic Five, the family left, I pulled in and figured, all right, you know, let me let me go ahead and um, and uh, and switch over to the 350, which I did. And then when I went to the 350, I was still at a relatively low state of charge. I can't remember exactly, but I was only pulling 124. So I should have stayed on the 150. So um, anyway, that was that was something I I was not super happy about. But um, but at least it was not doing this yo-yo as Kyle's calling it this dirty charging this this um, roller coaster where it goes up, it goes down. How much you're pulling. It's just crazy. I can't believe that's good for the battery pack or or the charger. I just can't believe that. Anyway, we stayed overnight in Florida, uh, McClenny, Florida, just to the west of of uh, no, to the west of Jacksonville, and and then what we did was we thought we would have enough juice to make it all the way down to the walk at at uh, Highlands Crossing, but. We miscalculated. We didn't. We didn't charge enough. We miscalculated. Well, I miscalculated, and then, and then, we went to Bushnell, and that got a little interesting. Where we had to manage the state of charge to pull in right at zero percent. Now Bushnell, I've been there many times before. There's only four stations there. There's two one fifties and two three fifties. And had another Walmart, by the way, they were yeah, all they were at Walmart. All, every single one of these stations was Walmart. And, um, which, you know, isn't bad if you hit one or no, two. No, I mean, listen. By the time you hit four or five. It's, yeah, but just so you know, the Walmarts, you can get nine peeps for $1.57. <laughs> so, and then you can get purple, yellow, or pink, uh, and watermelon, so sour, wa sour, sour like watermelon sour. peeps, which is something that is, is new to me. That we bought just to try. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you, I'm I'm watching him. Okay, he can hover. So, all right. So we blew out of Bushnell with a little too much juice. But the goal was, if we're not going to be able to get a good session on the 350, there, we we knew we had a good. We knew out of the walk well. Here. We thought that the walk at Highlands. I knew that that was a good, good, good set. Um, a good a good setup good setup because we love that place it's brand new chargers relatively new chargers and, and they're we were down there christmas yeah week we got it and, and, great and we charged really fast with the model s using the combo one adapter so so anyway um we were we were pulling in bushnell we pulled in at exactly zero percent and we were charging on a 350 and again, what we went all the way up to 174, and here at one point we went up to 280. No, no, that's 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 at the walk at Highlands. I'm talking about Bushnell. So Bushnell was all over the place, ping ponging, doing the dirty charge, the tango, whatever you want to call it, the roller coaster, the yo-yo, crazy charging session. And uh, a poor charging session. Poor charging session. I noted in my book with a big sad face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's important. So, so then what we decided to do was to get just enough juice in order to go down to 
uh, walk at Highlands uh, at Highlands Preserve. Preserve, and it was only 44 miles to get there to, to from from uh, Bushnell, but we charged up to enough juice for 60 miles, and then we we ripped it, allegedly. And one of the things that I learned about this car, allegedly, is that a Tesla on autopilot with highway lane keep, uh, adaptive cruise, has a maximum speed of 85 miles an hour. This Lucid, allegedly, has a maximum speed of 90. So, look, when you're out west and you're on a road trip and you're doing 85 miles an hour, and cars are passing you, 90 might be the number that you need. And if 90 is the number that you need on a Tesla, in a Tesla, whatever, you're gonna have to actually steer the car. Whereas in a Lucid, the car will steer itself all the way up to 90 miles an hour. At least that's my theory, if you know what I'm saying. Now, when we pulled into the walk at Highlands Preserve at it was toggling between 1% and 0%. We pulled in and we immediately hit, what did we, What was the max, 285? 285. 285 kilowatts. And it was an excellent charging session. Once the car, which I will publish as a separate video, I've got two zero to 100 charging sessions now. One that was done up in Stanford, Connecticut, um, that was tolerable, but not great. This was a much better session on a much better uh, station. And, um, but here is, here is my theory. My, not my theory, but here is, here's a fact. This car from 85% state of charge to 100% state of charge takes about 45 minutes. Do not stay on the hook if you're road tripping this car. So the, the trick to, to road tripping this car leave full maximize the amount of energy that you have in the battery on your first leg of your trip and then pull in as low a state of charge as possible preferably not to a signet station made in 2020 but a newer one or a, maybe one of the newer abb units as a 350 and once you start to taper then probably around 60 percent state of charge leave as long as you can get to that next station. Uh, I was pulling 155 kilowatts at 50% state of charge. So it tapered from 285 down to 155 from zero to 50% state of charge. Now keep in mind this car will show with the 21s 465, 467 miles of range. But if you're going at very high speeds, you're only gonna have you know, 330, let's say, miles of range on a full charge. So keep that in mind. Now, with the 19 inch wheels, which I'm gonna be picking up on my way back up to Florida next week, I've sourced them from a, a previous owner, uh, a, a private owner of them. Uh, we believe that we will see on the same similar trip to this, uh, around 3.4, miles per, per kilowatt hour, which would give an effective range instead of 336 miles of around 380 miles. And so the 19 inch wheels are less prone, of course, to potholes, you know, blowouts and that kind of thing. A little bit smoother ride. Um, from what I understand, a lot quieter ride. I have driven a Grand Touring with 19 inch wheels and it was it was very quiet. There's a lot of glass in this car. So anything you can do to get rid of the road noise from the tires is a good thing. So, yeah, we believe that's going to be about 380 uh, miles of, uh, of range at a 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So, yeah, look, I think that this has been a successful trip from the standpoint of the car itself. Super comfortable, right? Yeah. We, we woke up this morning. Normally on a trip like this, you, you're yeah, you're sore, pretty achy, and, achy sore. and sore, and neither one of us were. Felt good. A few hours sleep. We didn't spend a long time in the hotel, but enough because you were tired. Um, I was tired. Yeah. You were still tired. Yeah. Um, but can I just correct something I said yesterday? Sure. 
uh, yesterday when I was talking about the interior of the car and I made you, the, when you made the comment about how I'm always wrong. So is, is that what you're saying? When I made the comment about my visor here, my sun visor yesterday, it wasn't look, it's not staying up now. Oh, now it's staying up. It's wonky. OK, anyway, it stays up. So you have two hands to do what you need to do in the mirror. It's right. Here. Yes. Remember yesterday it didn't work at all. You know what, Kathy? Today it's working. The true mark of a professional is when they admit when they're when they're wrong i don't care i was wrong i wasn't wrong i was right yesterday today the problem corrected oh, so, itself so what you're saying is that the car self heals well i hear they do over the air updates oh is that that's we got it over the update <laughs> all right well listen we're going to we're going to take this thing home now Oh, but we that are, traffic. and I they're. Just want to go to Marco Island. Well, look, you know what? There's a Model Y right there. I'm in Florida, I see palm trees. It's warm outside for sure. Yeah. We just put on the cooled seats, which I don't typically like. Right. But because I have jeans on and it's hot, I feel. Yeah, they're not overly, they're not overly aggressive. Cold. Yeah, which is. But good. it's enough to keep the moisture down, which is good. Yeah. And I don't know if they push air or suck air out. Uh, I, I think they're I think they're sucking air out away from you, which actually makes more sense from a humidity standpoint. But yeah, so so anyway, really enjoyable trip. I love spending time in this car. I don't like traffic, but one thing about traffic is when you get trafficy, you definitely get more efficiency. We're fully charged. We don't need <laughs> any more of that. We've got eighty seven percent state of charge. And we have how far now? About two hours. Uh, yeah. Well, at this rate, with this traffic, probably I don't know six, seven hours. Oh, you know. Don't even say. Bailey, you did so good on this trip. Yes, you did. Yes. How's it going, girl? Huh? Oh, uh, were you sleeping? Were you sleeping? <laughs> Come up here, Blue. Thirteen hundred miles later, she's she's made it to Naples, Florida. All right, Kath, how are you doing? All right. So we've arrived here in Naples, Florida, where many of you have seen my videos in the past where I've been super angry about the uh, the stations here. And the first thing I see is that this, this 350 over here, the charger's unavailable. But then I noticed something. I said, wait a minute, that's a new SK Signet unit. And I'm like, wait, that's, that's pretty wild. So, and then, I saw that this unit over here is brand new and this is one of the new SK Signets and I'm plugged in and a plug and charge worked. And then there's another SK Signet right over there. So we've got three brand new SK Signets here in Naples, Florida, a welcome addition to say the least. And this unit over here is the original ABB unit for the Chatamo and also the CCS. And I know that someone was actually just charging there because I happened to see the receipt that they actually received uh, energy there. But look, this is huge news. Naples, Florida has three brand new, even though one of them's down, I couldn't be happier. Thank you, Electrify America, for putting in these beautiful stations, these 350s here. This is, this is uh, truly life altering for me and for everyone that lives here in the Naples area. But if you could get that one, that's down, up, that'd be great. I'll probably give you guys a call and tell you it's down. You probably already know though. All right, so we've made it to the condo on Marco Island, Florida. Bailey, you did great. Kathy, thank you for being an awesome co-pilot. And everyone, if you stuck with us this far, thank you for watching this entire video. We sure had, so I had a blast. He had a blast. The car's amazing. Uh, the EA charging network is a little bit stressed and uh, hopefully people have learned a little bit from this road trip. But um, thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks, Bailey, everybody. take care, bye-bye. <laughs>